boys screw loose, they done stripped the bolts on them. Should have never sent them to pick up the work for me. Sprayed the park and had my shit inside the car. Marcus Smart Boy was shooting with a 36 on him. Said if he wasn't in a rush, they was all goners. Tank cursive on the chest, he was gonna show on John. They were sleeping on the guard. Hello and welcome to another episode of Chuddy's Corner. I'm your host, Ben Handler, a.k.a. King Chuddy. Joined, as always, by my co-host, Nick Pereno. Nick, how we doing? I'm, I'm tired, Ben. <laughs> I think like the Celtics team, I'm, I'm running on I'm, I'm running on fumes here. So yeah, hopefully, uh... hopefully I like them can uh, can dig deep and find it for a couple more games. Yeah, well, it's 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 been pretty exhausting, um, even from a fan standpoint, and even for an insomniac like myself. Uh, Exhausting in many ways. We'll get into that and much more. It is Wednesday, June 15th, 8.37 p.m. on the East Coast. We are coming to you you the night before uh, Brink of Elimination, Game 6 for the Celtics in the NBA Finals. uh, Down 3-2 in the series after a tough Game 5 loss the other night. We're going to dig in to... Game five, what went wrong, and, and a little bit at the end of game four, um, you know, where, where this series has kind of gone really downhill for the Celtics, how they're in this deficit, and then, um, you know, try to try to focus on the future. And with a positive note, say what has to change for the Celtics in game six, if they hope for there to be a game seven, to live another day, to fight another day. So it'll be a pretty loaded show, a lot to talk about. Uh, down 3-2. In the finals, on the brink of elimination for the fourth time in these playoffs, but you know we are going to uh, we're going to stay positive. We're feeling good, not too somber. Won't be dark. Uh, before we dive into everything, just a reminder: if you're not already following us, please do so on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your pods. And then, of course, check out the blog at nickpereno.com. Click on Chuddy's Corner right on the homepage. Big link. Lots of blogs on every game, much more. Everything Celtics, and of course, links to all the podcasts on there. Great stuff. And then, of course, you can follow us on Twitter, at Chuddy's Corner. And then we each have our own Twitter. I'm at King Chuddy, and Nick is at underscore Nick Pereno. So, without further ado, we got to start with what has immediately passed, and that was, of course, Game 5, the Celtics. They were up 2-1 in the series, feeling pretty good. They were up in Game 4 at home, feeling pretty good. That obviously went awry. Warriors pulled it out, tied the series at 2. Went back to Golden State for that pivotal Game 5. And uh, for the most part, the Celtics laid an egg, other than pretty much one quarter. Um, Saw about 10 minutes of great basketball, and otherwise... It was a bit of the same that we've seen at times, a bit of new things we haven't seen in this series at times, um, but overall just a lot of frustrating inconsistency from the Celtics, especially to start the game and to finish the game, which is not usually a recipe for success in basketball, unfortunately. So here we are yet again on the brink of elimination. How do we get here, Nick? What ha- what happened in Game Five? What what sticks out to you the most, especially having it having a day or two to really digest it and kind of process what happened and where we are? What's what's the big takeaway from this series right now, and especially that Game Five? Well, I'm still I'm still trying to get over that Game Four loss too, because you know, especially it's been you know it, it, the fact that we lost Game Five, and the more time I've had to think about it, it's like. Like we were up, we we should have been up three to one in this series, and now all of a sudden we're on the brink of elimination, and it's just it's really frustrating. And I don't want to dwell on it too much. I just I have to get it, I have to get it off my chest because that was, you know, you don't. That's why it's the you know this is the finals. You don't get these opportunities, you know, all the time. And the fact that we just you know handed Game Four away is just still really, really weighing on me. But yeah, I don't know. To get to Game Five, it's <laughs> basically what it's been for us all playoffs. Um, you know, we when we turn the ball over, we lose. When we, you know, take care of the ball, we win games. And I mean, it's 
it's oversimplified and Mm -hmm. um you know it's pretty much what everybody's been harping on all playoffs so it's like it's a little you know overplayed but i mean it's kind of just it's kind of what it is and i mean it's not like you know you can't just say i'm not trying to say like we turn the ball over we win or we lose but in the opposite it's just like when we were before the series started we kind of had we talked about how you know some of the things that happened to us in Miami, some of these slumps, and you know this these stretches of just playing you know awful offense or stagnant and whatever. How we were able to get away with it against Miami because they're not really a high powered offense, and we were a little bit worried about that going into the finals, Golden State series, because it's not like that against Golden State. If you have a slump. Or if you're turning the ball over, you know, we don't have – they don't have that kind of leeway as they did with Miami. So, I mean, you know, if we turn the ball over three times in a row against Miami, that might end up being nothing. You do that against Golden State, then that's like, you know, yeah. six, eight, ten points. I mean, it's like you just don't – there's just no margin for error, or very little margin for error against Golden State if you're playing sloppy. And I think – you know, that was something we were worried about going into the into the series. And, you know, in these games that we've lost, that's pretty much proven to be our, our problem. And I think that was, you know, obviously on display in game five, too. So, yeah. um, it's hard not to start with the turnovers. I think, um, I mean, it's it's glaring. It's obvious, like you said. But it's at this point, I mean, it's not like nitpicking a stat. Like, that's very clearly <laughs> just a key to these games. Um, and, I mean, I think, you like you said, we got away with it against Miami. I mean, we barely got away with it against yeah, Miami. Fairly. Like it was a pretty similar scene when we would go through those stretches um, with all the turnovers and that leads to the offense. I mean, it's obviously related to the bad offense and allowing the other team to score. Some of these quarters really have felt pretty similar to some of those bad quarters against Miami, which uh, I mean, I guess, I don't know. It's, it's means it's obviously a Celtic problem, but I guess like, where do you start with the turnovers at this point, I mean, it's it's easy to say, like, don't turn the ball over. But what specifically, I mean, how much, like, I think I, I thought it was good, but I think I even underestimated Golden State's defense, for one. Um, for two, I think part of it is, you know, this is clearly a problem that's been showing up all playoffs long, especially against good defenses. And, you know, the more we play, the more the the book is kind of out that our best players and best playmakers aren't like the best, don't have the best ball security. I mean, some of these games and moments are just completely like the wheels are falling off, but some of the stuff isn't totally out of character. Like the Jays and Marcus aren't, you know, guys who like never turn the ball over. Um, so, I mean, that's, I think part of it too. And then part of it is just some lapses, obviously some poor execution. And then I think another part of it is like trying to do a little too much at times. Um, you know, trying to, trying too hard to make like the perfect play, forcing things that just aren't there, uh, both with passing and driving. Um, so, I mean, put all that together, it's a pretty terrible combination, what do you see? What do you think is, is the main culprit for all of these turnovers that we can't seem to stop no matter how much everyone says it? Um, well, I mean, against, I mean, it's obviously against these good defenses, um, you know, Miami and Golden State, who's, like you said, is probably hasn't gotten enough credit for how good they've been defensively this series and probably most of the playoffs, really. But, um, you know, we've, the, the Jays especially have been obviously – getting better, you know, game by game, week by week when it comes to playmaking. And I feel like a big part of their big part of their playmaking is, you know, the drive and kick. And they're they're finding people they're finding guys open, you know, on the opposite end of the on the opposite end of the floor and they're like, you know, passing to the cross court and that's where they're finding a lot of open guys. And I think Golden State they seem to have kind of pick up on that. You see when, you know, Tatum and Brown are going to the hoop and Marcus and you know they're looking to make that pass to find someone open Golden State almost like you know they kind of know it's coming it seems like they know it's coming and they get in all the passing lanes and they're not like you know leaving 
you know, Grant open in the corner. He only had one three point attempt. So, you know, they're something they they have to be doing something in order to, you know, actively try and stop these, you know, corner threes or whatever. Um, so I, I don't know. And it's like the, they, they got a lot better at not getting caught in the air, going to the basket and trying to kick the mm-hmm. ball. And that just kind of seems to be their biggest problem, at least with maybe yeah. Jalen and Marcus. They These drives, to kind of just, drives yeah. to nowhere. Kind they of. sign up. Yeah. They keep, they, they drive and you know, it's the right idea, but once they, it's kind of like they make the decision, they're going to drive and kick it. And then they get up in the air to pass and no one's there and they end up, you know, throwing it to a wide or to a, you know, the other team or out of bounds or whatever it is. And it's, you can't, once you start getting caught in the air and not knowing what to do, then that's when you're in trouble because yeah, it's easy to pick that off. And it's usually, especially with for Golden State, it's an easy couple of points on the other end. And, you know, it's not only the fact that we're turning it over, it's that our best players are turning it over. Um, well, I mean, those are the guys who have the ball. And right. A position. I, mean, I mean, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, I get what you're saying, obviously. Yeah. But it's like, you know, mm-hmm. out, out of those, what was it, 18 turnovers, Jason had four, Jalen had five, Marcus had four. So, I mean, you know, that's, that's basically all of them right there. Yeah. And it's, it's you know, turnovers are going to happen, but it's just the sloppy turnovers that you can't have because those – those sloppy turnovers that lead, lead to easy baskets. Golden State knows what to do in transition. Yeah. I mean, 22, they, 22 points off turnovers is bad. They may, yeah, Nine they steals. May. So those they, are like, you know, live ball turnovers. Are the, exactly. The live the ball worst turnovers kind. are the ones well, obviously. that I mean, really kill you. No turnovers obviously. are good. But. So, like, if if they're going to go to the basket and get caught in the air, just throw it into, like, the fifth row and, <laughs> rather than just, like, try and find yeah. somebody. Because, I mean, you're much better off – you know, having them take a side out and letting us at least set our defense. Um, so, I mean, I know that's that's not a serious answer, but no, I it kind of is a serious answer. I get what you mean. You don't want to – the last thing you want to do is make essentially the outlet for yeah. their fast break. And yeah. we've we've done it way too many times. Um, yeah. I mean, just going back to what you said about the those three guys having all the turnovers, though, it's like literally who else on the team even, like, dribbled? <laughs> Not, man. You know what I mean? It's like the I get that's obviously too many turnovers for each of those guys. Like I'd love yeah. to see them cut that total amount in half. Derek White um, dribbles sometimes. Derek White dribbles some, although he, <laughs> he didn't seem like he wanted to have the ball in his hands a lot. Um, we'll talk about him and some other things, obviously a little bit later. Um, but yeah, I mean, whatever. It's it's too many turnovers. It is way too many turnovers. And I mean, to compound the matter, the Warriors who actually turn the ball over a good amount usually are didn't turn the ball over at all they only had six turnovers um and i think only two of those were live ball steals so the celtics are not only giving up a ton of turnovers giving up a ton of transition points but basically not getting anything back in that department on the other end which again it's not like our defense was bad but credit to golden state for taking such good care of the ball and it almost makes me think like as sometimes as bad as we've made golden state's offense look relative to them and how kind of like clunky it's been. It almost, it sounds like it sounds backwards to say, but it, it almost makes me wonder if we need to just like simplify the offense and make it more, you know, just like get the pick and roll on Curry or even like Peyton, basically anyone and just step into a shot. Like the one thing Tatum has been doing really well is hitting threes. I, I maybe think an adjustment is just have him and Brown and, you know, whoever else is open, like put it up more. Even, even some of these con- contested shots, if you've got a size advantage or you get, you know, lightly contested jump shot. I mean, this is, like you said, this is the NBA finals. That's what the great players often do take jump shots. And those are our guys. And the thing is, you know, I think we'll hit some, it could end up being good offense, but even the misses, at least you're ending the possession with a missed shot and not a turnover. Um, so like, again, it sounds kind of counterintuitive to be like less ball movement, <laughs> but at the same time, like the drive and the drive and quote unquote kicks and like the quote unquote extra pass or trying to hit the guy across court, like the Warriors have just been all over it. And I think, you know, it's not what I would have said at the beginning of the series, but maybe we do just lean into a little more of like 
making it simple and, and, you know, pick and roll, like matchup hunts a little more, even than we have been. Um, I don't know. Like we're, we all, we both always wanted them to go to the basket more. And it almost feels like they should, I don't want to say settle, but like aggressively look for jump shots off the catch and off the dribble. Cause it's just like the longer our possessions go, the worse the outcome is. So if you get a pass, like bring the ball up, dribble handoff for Tatum. They give him a little bit of separation with 14 on the shot clock. Just chuck it. Like, yeah. Right now it feels like that's a solid result for our offense. Yeah, is this any, crazy? <laughs> any open shot is a solid result. Well, for... definitely open. I'm saying not even really what you may consider open. Well, like, yeah. I mean, with I Tatum, know. with Tatum, you know, most and, Brown. Of sh- and Brown even, I mean, they can get, they can get off a, you know, slightly contested shot. That would be, you know, I would consider it to be an open look just because of their, you know, their height and length and whatnot. So, yeah. Um, I mean, it seems like especially Tatum, he's just having so much more success shooting the ball than driving right. yeah. that at this point, I mean, again, it's like long-term process. I want him going to the basket more and working through this, but right sure. now NBA finals wise on the brink of elimination, maybe put up 15 threes next game. Yeah. I mean, it's something's got to happen. And you know, again, it's not like even a miss it, three is better than a turnover. Yeah. And I mean, like, you know, every, every game we've had stretches of looking good, you know, even last game, which you know, yeah. third quarter, obviously we came out one of the best good. stretches we've had. Right. right. So <laughs> it's like, I, I wouldn't say we really changed our, you know, offensive philosophy much in that third quarter. It's just, we, I don't know, execute no, I mean, maybe a little yeah. better. And De- it's, it's uh, definitely a main part of it is the execution. But again, like I said, at this point in the finals, like, do you almost just make it easier to execute? And whereas, yeah, yeah, you're probably not going to get the beautiful, like five passes and all this action around the core that ends in a beautiful wide open look. But, you know, if we maybe shoot a little worse looking, like, you know, shot selection overall, but cut the turnovers in half, I'll happily take that. Yeah. I mean, it probably evens out in the end if you think about it like that, but obviously we, you know, we have to hit some of those threes for it to work. And I guess in theory, you know, if we come out and, you know, that's our game plan, if we're hitting shots and, you know, it seems to be working, then Golden State's obviously going to adjust. And then the hope is that they over adjust and we can kind of get back into our old offense and maybe that would work Mm -hmm. to close the game or something. I mean, obviously, you know, that's obvious, um, obviously what, you know, an ideal scenario would be, but um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I get what you're saying. If if it's not working, you know, we have to try something else. And it worked for one quarter last game, so that's obviously not going to do it. We need we need to put yeah we need to put a full game together at least once. <laughs> yeah, um, I would. That would be good. So I don't know. It, it's, it's well. What else? I mean, what else can you do to not to have fewer turnovers? Like, are you, you know. Like, what are you doing realistically? Having Al come up high and like run the offense through him more or through Rob, like maybe run the offense through the bigs more. You can maybe try that a little. Um, I guess I don't hate running the offense through Rob. Maybe I think I think I I alluded to a little with the matchup hunting, and I don't I I hate getting carried away with it, but it does feel like a lot, especially in the fourth quarter. We're not really taking advantage of the matchups when they're there, and again, like we're working too hard to get into stuff. But too often, like, we were ending up with going at Wiggins and Draymond and, like, Clay when he was pr- playing pretty well. And we, we like, really let Poole off the hook. Poole had a huge game four. He had, I think, 14 points in 17 minutes. And I felt like we only punished him a couple times. Like, it was in that third quarter. I think Marcus posted it up, posted him up. We both called it. And we're like, beautiful. Like, keep doing that. And I don't think they did it again. Um, and just, like, the Warriors are given some switches with Curry and Poole. And I think just go at those guys and – Get that matchup, and if you know, like, even if it's a pull-up shot over one of those guys, shoot, shoot that. If you're one of the yeah. Jays, like, that's what we're working towards. It doesn't matter how you get to it. If they give it to you, just like take that all day. Um, I felt like they were. It was just ending up being rejecting screens and J- Tatum going at Wiggins, and Wiggins, credit to him, was sensational. Yeah, like, it seems I just, like we're working too hard to get too little, and I think kind of. 
stuff is there. It's 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 almost simplifying things a little bit. Kind of the same theme. Yeah, and f- like like kind of what you're saying. For every reason, you know, like when Marcus posted up, uh, and we were you know excited or like keep doing that, you know, then we don't do it, and it's kind of like this trend where we're not really doing enough of what's working and doing too much of what's not working. And it's like, oh, that was that was great. You know, let's keep doing that until they mm-hmm. until they make us, you know, do something else. And then it's but we just didn't do it. It's like it's okay to keep doing the same thing over and over if it's working. And that's usually something the Celtics and E May have been like awesome about. I love right. that they will they will go back. They do usually do that. And I mean the the pool post up thing was one thing. I think generally well, yeah, that's like, just one example. I think generally they do do that, but I just think they got away from it especially like it seemed evident in the fourth quarter there were times where i was yelling like why are you rejecting that screen like yeah. to get the matchup we want and just clearing out to go at wiggins or right. you know it's a uh, it's weird and it's frustrating i think yeah they have to be more even more decisive where again it's the finals and like every possession counts for so much you can't afford to have possessions where you're just like not i don't know not yeah. getting into good looks when good looks can be had. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It still I feels like we're not, not giving the Warriors defense enough credit. Cause it has, it really has been superb, but I just think stuff is there. If uh, we just executed like a little more crisply. And if it's like, we're like I was saying before about the, you know, getting caught in the air and, you know, Jalen dribbling into traffic and, you know, just losing it seemingly five times a game. Yeah, obviously, it's another easy. reason. Maybe he should just shoot jumpers more. Right. I feel like but sometimes I mean, he has it going, and he's hesitant to just catch it and shoot it if they're not right in his face. Like sometimes it seems like. I mean, last game it felt like he was going to get hot if, after the first few minutes. Not that he was hitting threes. I mean, it's getting to the basket with him, but I don't know. It's both. It's tough because I guess he when he's getting to the basket, we're so dynamic. It's hard to say you want to take that away, but the amount of turnovers, man, it's just yeah. problematic. And it's not, you know, it's for Jalen, obviously you want him going to the basket, but we got to make, like, got to instill it in his head. Like, don't, you can't dribble into a crowd. Like, you can't do it right now. It's not working. And another thing with Jalen, too, they were, they were forcing him to go left, like, yeah, right. every time. Yeah. Um, And then, you know, with, you tell these guys, like, you know, if you're, t- if you're doing it, you're trying to drive and kick, don't go up if you don't see somebody. And I mean, it's, it's obviously simplified, you know, it's, it's obviously easier to say than mm-hmm. do, but like, guys, it'd be like, guys, if, if you're going to the, if you're driving and you don't see anyone open, don't just jump up in the air and hope that, you know, mm-hmm. somebody overreacts and you hit someone, just stop and take a, you know, shitty mid range shot or something. At least it's not a turnover. I mean, well, and also even kind of what I was saying before with like launching the threes, but even in those moments, I wouldn't mind a little more selfish Tatum and Brown. Like if they get to the elbow and they see the help is coming instead of just like pull up and rise for like a yeah. mid range jump shot. Like I'd be fine also with Tatum shooting the mid range. If he can get into it and get rise and, you know, pull up a clean look, which he can It'd be very, why not get going from there rather than it's like, he's trying to either draw contacts or force one extra dribble. that isn't there or force a pass. that isn't there. And I mean, I don't want to be too critical because he overall has been doing a good job of playmaking, but there's just too many, too many plays at too critical of times, I guess, when the, the result just doesn't seem to be there. Yeah. And we know, you know, Jalen's obviously automatic for mid range. So I'm happy. I'd be happy to see more of that. And um, yeah, I mean, kind of like you said, a little bit more selfish. I mean, if they're going to, if we get into a situation where they're playing Jalen one-on-one, let him do his thing where he, you know, gets to the, gets to the hip and does his little, you know, his little turnaround move and get that mid-range shot. He's feels like they haven't been going for that. And I mean, again, the def- the defense deserves credit. That's a big part of it. Um, and, you know, Draymond isn't the conventional like rim protector, but he's, he's shown what he can do, uh, you know, under the basket at six, six. And that's what seems like limited athleticism, but he, yeah. he goes up he's straight and he just has, has a way of deterring shots. It's uh, you know, there's a reason he's as good as he is. And it's been everyone, not just him. Um, so 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of things, and I think it's a lot of things that the Celtics just need to clean up, and part of it is, like, the old just play better adjustment <laughs> has to be a part of it. Like, at a certain point, it's like, you guys have to take better care of the ball. And if yeah. they have to make some of these tweaks that we're talking about that aren't, you know, major changes, um, you know, I don't think that's a terrible idea. But overall, yeah. the main thing really is just, like, more focus and just just cleaning it up. So yeah. Now or never, you just have to do it. I know it's. <laughs> I mean, it, go, it can kind of go either way where you're like, hey, like, don't turn the ball over. And then maybe they start to play a little bit stiffer and the ball's not moving as much and they're kind of mm-hmm. afraid to pass. And it's like, you know, obviously you don't want that to happen, but in this, in this situation, it might be better off than the alternative. Mm-hmm. I mean, if they're like. You know, like you said, if they're afraid to pass it, they might take up some, you know, take some more selfish shots or whatever. But it's not a turnover, or they might. And not again, play extra. play quickly. Yeah, play, play with quickly. pace. The slow, the slower we go, the more Golden State settles in defensively, and as it's been this entire series, the worse of a shot or turnover we end up with. Like yeah. just play quickly, rush it up, make a pass right away, get into action. They have been walking it up, I feel like, a lot more than they have been this playoffs. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like we kind of got out of that, you know, whole, you know, walking the dog up the court and just, like, taking their time, whatever. But I think we just got to – we just got to move. I mean, I know, like, they don't want to get – I think they're kind of – yeah, they're exhausted, and I think they're kind of worried about getting into, like, a shootout with Golden State. But it's like, you know, taking shots early in the shot clock doesn't mean you're going to get into, like – a foot race. It's just yeah. you're taking and a I, shot yeah. when it's available. So I think that's overblown and I don't I mean if that's I don't think that's a concern. I don't think it should be a concern. Like I push push it, push it, push it at this point. Yeah, I mean that's how we've won all these games is by pushing it on you know both ends. I mean it's just what we gotta do. Um so mm-hmm. I don't know. I think we can we can play our game more efficiently. It's just we have to make a conscious effort. And I mean, I know it's hard to, it, it, I'm, I'm sure they're, they've made an effort, not that they're, they're not trying to turn it over, but yeah, you know, there, there are adjustments that can be made and I, this is our last chance to make that adjustment. So <laughs> definitely. And, um, obviously, and we're playing, you know, we're playing against the team that's been there many times. They've won, you know, they've won a few championships together, same coach, same core. You know, some of the pieces have changed, obviously, but I mean, these guys know that the spotlight's not too big for them. They no. know they know how to get it done. The game doesn't speed up for them in the in the finals. I mean, they're they're you know they're winners, I and mean, this is this is why this was you know probably the number one advantage they had going into the series that their experience and um, you know the fact that they've been there so many times. So. It's kind so, of showing late late in the series. Um, yeah, so when it comes to what's showing, because, I mean, we, when you started off, you started off touching on game four and how rough that was, and I think it almost, it felt like the momentum and, like, bad taste in our mouths for the end of game four just carried right into the start of game five because they were up 24 to eight in the first quarter, and it felt, you know, it, it just felt like an extension of the end of that game four. So it's really, it's all been the same kind of, thing that's seen that's had this whole series kind of spiral um for us lost two games in a row for the first time all playoffs first time since march um i believe first time with uh without resting everyone since like january but what do you think let's start with tatum but then i'm gonna ask you about the team as a whole like tatum i said he's shooting the three really well um he's doing like a okay job playmaking. I mean, he has a bunch of assists, but he also has a bunch of turnovers. Uh, his two point shooting has been historically bad for a finals appearance. Um, I was, I thought he was better in game four, uh, game five, but still, you know, not up to his standards. And I think that's kind of it is just not, he hasn't been up to quite his standards or quite what we expected from him. I think coming into this series, um, so what do you think, looking at it now, like what do you most attribute to the recent semi-struggles that Tatum has had? Do you think it's an injury and the shoulder is bothering him? 
Um, do you think it's fatigue, um, both physical, maybe mental and emotional strain um, and the weight of everything that's been going on? Um, or do you think it's just maybe that uh, we, without really realizing it, have the expectations a little too high for a kid who's still just 24 and is playing in his first NBA finals um, and being asked to carry a significant burden on both ends. And let's, you know, still point out is playing stellar defense and whatever, or um, do you think any of it is just like jitters and the moment itself of being in the NBA finals? So I guess out of kind of those four options or something else, if there's something else you see, uh, like what do you blame the most for that? We haven't kind of seen the, Tatum going crazy that I think we were hoping to see going into the series. It is kind of it's kind of odd because when Tatum is struggling, like when he goes through, you know, stretches of, you know, poor shooting or whatever, like not being able to score or whatever, it's usually his three-point shooting, I feel like. It's, you know, like a lot of his games, I feel like he'll, he starts 0 for 8 from 3 or something, but he's you know, getting the line or getting layups or whatever. But the last few games, it's been the complete opposite. He's wet from three, but he can't get the easy baskets. So it's hard to say that it's fatigue or he's losing his legs or whatever. I'm sure he's exhausted, but you know, a lot of times when, you know, when, when you're exhausted, I feel like the threes don't generally fall. I mean, okay. But as a counter to that, I mean, what do you airball four shots in the fourth quarter last game? He did. So that is true. he looked like, awfully fatigued out there to me. I'm not not to no. He's say that's I mean, the whole reason, but I mean the team is definitely <laughs> fatigued. He's they're running out of fuel, and that, that's yeah. like for sure. Well, the, the and I think Tatum he, in specific too. He's played not just this playoffs, but he's played the most. I think the most minutes of any NBA player since the bubble. Yeah, the Celtics really awesome. haven't had a break with the long run in the bubble, the quick turnaround, the weird season, and then the long run this season. And, of course, the Olympics run in between. So, like, Tatum has to be running on empty even. And, you know, people say, oh, he's a 24-year-old kid. But, like, this is just taxing on the human body no matter how old you are. It's, I think I mean, he's averaged 41 minutes a game in the playoffs. And it's insane. More like, than, we more just, than that lately. Yeah, we kind of take for granted, like, the physically fit freak that he is um, sure and again when we don't see it you know we see you're out there we but, expect your best so it's not but an like, excuse but at the same time it's the amount of minutes he's played in this in this entire run like the last time he's had a real rest it's it's kind of crazy yeah but to like to the point i was making it's i'm not i i can't put the fact that he's not being able to hit that he can't hit two shot two pointers on the fatigue. I'm saying like he's definitely fatigued in the yeah. fourth. It's obvious he's airballing shots, like you said. But there's something going on, and I think it's I think it's got to be an injury. Um, you know, I think the shoulder. They're not gonna say whatever, and I don't want to. It's not like an excuse or anything, but it doesn't look. Something doesn't look right. So he's obviously yeah. playing through whatever it is, and he's still, you know, we're still better off having him out there, obviously, than not. So, but yeah, it's like he's he's getting to the he's the, the, a lot of these shots where he gets to the rim and you know he finishes. It's like he's almost he's almost like he can't even like get a good look off, a good look when he's close to the rim. It's like he gets in there and then you know loses the ball as he's bringing it up or, you know, just doesn't even, you know, doesn't even give himself like a, a good look at it. And it's, it's, I don't know if he's having like, if it's his range of motion or something that's bothering him or, and I mean, Golden State's Hard, obviously doing, yeah. doing a great job of, you know, clamping yeah. him when he gets, gets in there. And, but I mean, then you see, you know, he has a nice finish. You're like, oh, well, maybe it's something else, but <laughs> there, there's something about the way he's getting to the hoop and not finishing and not putting up. You know, yeah, good looking and, shots. I, I feel like there's something uh, he's uncomfortable some for some reason. Right. right, and it's weird to think that it's a shoulder injury, like you said, with how well the three ball. Yeah, effect, right. like you'd think of anything, it would be the shot that would be like off. And it seemed like when he first heard it against Miami, he was definitely trying to like go to the hoop more. But now yeah. it's just kind of this weird balance where like the three is kind of money, the driving is a mess. Um, and the free throw shooting is a mess. Mm. So, it's, I mean, it was bad for the whole team, but Tatum was two of six last game from the free throw line. 
and on two separate trips, he missed both shots. Um, like that is just weird for yeah. him, obviously. So, I mean, I think there's definitely something going on with injury. Um, but I mean, again, it's like at the same time, last game, last game was just a very weird game in a lot of ways. It felt like it was like four different games happened within a game. But mm-hmm. um, anyway, in the early going, like again, we got down 24, eight Tatum hadn't even attempted a shot, like was almost invisible. Then got an early rest, came back in and immediately hit three straight shots and like got to the basket aggressively for a layup, hit a pull up. Um, and then I think someone gave him a good feed and he hit another like little bunny, but it was like, okay, he's getting himself going, you know, picked it up at a solid second quarter and then started off, hit the two threes early in the third quarter. I mean, he was past 20 points, like right at the start of the third quarter. And it kind of felt like, okay, here we go. You know, it's Tatum take over time. And then, you know, not much the end of the third and pretty much nothing in the fourth. And again, just bad, a lot of air balls, um, a lot of just trying to like, ISO Wiggins and do step backs or pull ups and a lot of front rim, a lot of air balls. And then, you know, like I said, big, big chance at the line, missed a pair of free throws and what felt like almost like a reverse dagger, like after missing those and then Golden State scored, it was like, oh, like, you know, we, we're not going to win after that. So it's just kind of very weird how it's coming and going like that. Yeah. Um, it is. I mean, I feel like a lot of these games have been weird, and it's it's kind of. Yeah. I mean, it's Golden State makes you play uncomfortably. We and we generally make other teams play uncomfortable too. So it's like it's two teams with great defenses that make the other team, you know, yeah, not you know play differently than they they want to play. So I mean, but I mean the ebbs and flows of a game. So the the Celtics scored thirty five points in the third quarter last game, um, and then in the fourth quarter. We had 20. four, four. Well, only fourteen until right. we pulled the starters with a minute left. Yeah, and, then, and sixteen know. in the first quarter. And it's just like how you can't do that. You yeah. can't do that. And how do you do that? Like you, it's just it's really bad. So I mean, again, so like Tatum's having his own issues, but still, like again, I think he's doing enough that we could win these games um, with you know some better efforts elsewhere. So like looking up and down the rest of the team, do you think? The team is just fatigued, again, from, like, exerting through all these series, the physical brutality of the last two. I mean, really, this entire run, even the Nets series was, like, intense, close games, even though we won them all. Then, I mean, seven-game bloodbath with the Bucks, seven-game bloodbath with the Heat, with, like, no time off. And then now we're at least getting time off between games, but obviously flying all the way across the country and playing, like, again, kind of bloodbath-type games, not as, like, physically in your face, I would say, but definitely very taxing games. So, I mean, how much do you think the team, like some of these players have just hit a wall physically, maybe even mentally where getting like this intensely focused on something for this long without a break is like breaking them. And how much do you think is just that like the Warriors are just the better team and they're just kind of like imposing their, the things that make them great, which are just kind of like their consistency and, you know, repeated, really just like repeated consistency, just playing Hmm. mistake free um, on both ends and just like wearing us down with precision and execution. Like they're kind of just beating us on the intangibles and and it's making it almost feel like just, you know, they are the older, more experienced team. They're the ones that have been here. They have that championship pedigree. We didn't have a game of finals experience. We got the rookie head coach. Like if as much as I hate to say it, it, like it almost feels like those things are kind of like, bearing their teeth a little bit and you the guys who are handling it better are kind of the guys who you sh- should expect to handle it better um yeah, well, i hate to say and i it's a lot of stuff to break down that's like doesn't exactly explain what's happening on the court but i think it's hard to act like that's not a factor right now so i don't know where do you where do you stand with kind of the breakdown of what's happening as a team well i think it's obvious that the mental aspect of it is has probably been harder on us than it has on them. And the, the, you know, that's, I feel like to be expected because, you know, you don't get as worn down mentally, you know, the longer you've been there. And I mean, you know, not to say that it's not, you know, draining on the warriors too, but like they know exactly what to expect. And, you know, it's they It's like, they have kind of like, you know, the answers to the test. It's like, we don't have to, we're not, you know, they're not worried about, you know, 
the you know traveling to cross the country the next game and they're not worried about you know the grind of being like oh we got to you know win the next game or we have to do this and that it's like just the mental aspect of it is you know is in golden state's favor and yeah. that's you know that's what a lot of people expected and it's not like we're mentally weak or whatever it's just um you know, it's their program to operate like that because they've been there so often. <laughs> they're incredibly mentally strong. And they're, yeah, they're, right. I mean, they're used to playing in the finals every year. So it's like, exactly. you know, for us, this is the first time we've ever been here. So we're like, ex- right. you know, we're going beyond our limits when, you know, yeah. Golden State, this is this is what they do. So, um, but yeah, I mean, all those things and you said, I think it, it factors it in. The, the You know, we're a young team with a rookie head coach against a veteran team and a veteran coach. And even though, you know, we might be more evenly matched on paper and, you know, talent wise, that does seem to be factoring in. And um, I don't think that's a surprise. It's just, you know, we're letting it, you know, it's, it's turning the series basically. It is. Yeah, it seems like it's it's not maybe a huge thing, but it's kind of making all the difference in a lot of ways. Um, it's showing up a lot. But also, I mean, that the mental exhaustion that they're winning at, but also like the physical exhaustion. I just spoke to how much all of our guys have basically played over the last like three years basketball. The Warriors, like it's almost the opposite. They haven't had deep playoff runs in a few years. Steph has missed a ton of time. Clay has obviously missed a ton of time. Um, Draymond, you know, those guys, like, they've had their chances to kind of rest and not play, put, like, heavy minutes on themselves for a variety of reasons. Um, you know, some injury recovery in there, obviously, too. But, like, they really haven't taxed their bodies to the degree that the Celtics have in the past few seasons or even anywhere close to that. And even in these playoffs, I mean, they beat Dallas in five, with gentlemen's sweep. Um, before that, they beat, what, Memphis in six and Denver in five. So... I mean, just nothing compared to what we exerted, and it seems like that's catching up. The mental part is catching up. Um, and then they're just out executing us, which, you know, part of it is both of those things, but then they're also just look crisper and kind of more focused and ready for the moment. So I guess the question is, can we overcome kind of those things and refocus ourselves and reel it back in now that, you know, we're staring staring down the barrel um, is that enough to reel us in and bring it back to focus for one more game at least, and then hopefully you do it again for one more game? But I don't know. That's the question. Like, I I trust that we're capable of doing it. Will we do it? I hope so. Um, Ime sounded str- almost a little defeated in his press conference last game, um, more so than other times. And I don't want to read into it. I think he's just frustrated. It was obviously a very frustrating night. Um, but, yeah, I mean, those are – that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to kind of raise our focus and out execute them straight up. It's the only way we're going to do it. It's yeah. not going to be easy. <laughs> no, I mean, we're going to have to play, you know, flawless basketball almost. And um, it's, I th- remember before the series started, we were talking about X factors and we both thought Wiggins was going to be the X factor for Golden State. And I think yeah. it's, you know, it's pretty obvious that's been the case, and it's just, he's been their second best player. It's been really impressive the series he's put together, and I mean, yeah, you know, he didn't he didn't even hit a single three last game, and he did. I, I think else. he was he was the best player on the floor. I think for yeah for the he whole was. game pretty much. He played thirteen rebounds. Uh, I mean, totally most in the game. Dominated the defensive glass. Twenty six points, and like you said, he was oh oh five uh, oh of six I think from three. But from two, he was like 12 of 17, and it just seemed like he had it all going. He was shooting mid-ranges that at the beginning of the game, I was like, you know, we'll live with those, but he was on fire with those. He was had a weird, like, bevy of kind of sh- impressive shot making. He was making some floaters. He made that funky, like, high off the glass shot. Um, and then, I mean, he threw it down, obviously, for that dunk. That was kind of the nail in the coffin at the end of the game. Like, he showed off the total package, and, yeah, if you had been, like, frozen in time ever since the NBA draft when he went number one and just woke up for that game, you'd be like, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that makes sense. <laughs> oh, yeah, good. He's I mean, that was, exactly that was the best was. game of his career on yeah. both ends. Like, m- maybe not statistically, but in terms of 
I mean, obviously, it's probably probably obvious statement, but in terms yeah. of like, the and, impact and... on a game in a high leverage situation, I mean, you have to tip your cap. It's just an amazing performance. I mean, that's he's out. You could argue he's outperforming both of the Jays in this series, which you know we're asking Jalen to play kind of a similar role, almost what he's doing. And you know, props props to Wiggins and props to Golden State for unlocking an, uh, a version of him that's like able to do this. Is you know impressive all around and you know that's kind of like to the greater point which you know they wiggins is kind of is a piece that golden state has or like a weapon they have that we just don't we we don't have on this roster and i mean we have what do you you mean we should have that we have two guys who should theoretically be i'm talking about i'm talking about on as him being a third option like we have He's the second option. Well, I guess he is at this point, but it's like, you know, in yeah. theory, it's, we have Jalen and Jason, and if it's not going for them offensively, it's going to be really hard for us to score. Last game, you know, Steph couldn't hit a shot, mm-hmm. and, you know, they were able to yeah. call on Wiggins to, you know, the, the kid played, you know, ISO yeah, basketball right. and was just, like, taking it to the rim and had those little, like, those little, like, baby hooks, I guess. I don't even know what you call them. I mean, they yeah. were money. It was impressive. Over, like, Rob, too. Yeah. I mean, on, like, good defense for the most part. It was just like, right. damn. Like, I felt like almost every shot until the end, I was like, you know, not not upset at all with, like, giving up the looks we were to him, and he just kept making them. Yeah, you know, it's like when you get... On the when Some you get at, like, huge junctures, too. Like, stemming right. the tides a lot of times. It was like he would... It was, they just felt like back-breaking shots where we played good D and got them to take the looks that we wanted. And he just kept hitting them. Yeah. It's, it's just like sometimes, you know, especially in games against good defenses, when things aren't going your way, sometimes you just need a, a guy who's not, you know, your best player mm-hmm. to be able to go get you a bucket. Be like, you know, Hey, go, go break us out of the slump or like, just go get us a bucket yeah. Go, You know, we just don't like, we don't have that beyond, Jalen and Jason. It's not that we don't have other guys that can't score. It's just like we don't have yeah, a third. Like, but they also like score. don't even have that beyond Steph. I mean, like I don't know. I I, I would take our top two scoring options over whoever. Like I would take Jalen over whoever you would say is their second guy that can get them a bucket. No, no, and I I, I don't know. I'm the I'm the same way. I think I would rather have our you know yeah top yeah. two. It's just okay. we yeah. don't have that like third guy that can. You know, we don't have three guys that we can say go get a bucket. We have two guys that you can say go get a bucket. Pretty much. Well, I think I mean he has been up and down this series, and he, the turnovers and stuff have been bad. The shooting has been great, but Smart has been pretty solid with the scoring. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm like, job, and I wouldn't even hate him being more aggressive, but more aggressive in terms of good looks. I mean, obviously, you know, always the case, but I think there's more there for Marcus getting to the rim and playing that bully ball like he kind of set the tone physically in that third quarter comeback. And when we've looked our best is, I mean, obviously we keep harping on that one awesome post up, but you know, again, they're going to, cause of how good Jalen and Jason are, they're going to have to put Curry pool, some of these guys on smart. And those are like, yeah, he needs to be in the action and getting either of those guys switched onto Tatum and Brown, or just getting to a spot where they can give smart the ball. And, you know, when he's in that like mid to short post, he's really, really good. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think that's there for the take. I would, I would be happy to see Smart uh, play a little bit more post. I mean, I, I love him in the post. Um, I love that little, like, you know, mid-range shot he has, like, coming out of the post. It's like he's got a lot of decent post moves. Um, you know, he can he can bully smaller guards. So it's like I'm I'm happy with those shots. And if he doesn't have anything, usually he makes a good, you know the right pass. But, um, but you know, it's. I feel like a lot of his scoring is situational. Uh, yeah, and but I feel like as opposed just to numbers like, wise, like as a third scorer, he's kind of fine. If our top two guys do what they're supposed to do, yeah. Marcus giving us like you know twelve to eighteen should be a solid third option as long as kind of the role players after him are doing their part. So I mean, I don't think Smart was really a big part of the problem with the offense last game, but no. let's kind of look up and down the list like. Horford, he was two of three on threes. He hit two, the two big threes during that stretch in the third quarter. But 
I mean, scored under 10 points. He is just doesn't really score in the losses. And he had, you know, what, 26 points for us in game one and had a big game in the game, in the game three win. And it's like, he's, I mean, he's the one who at the time looks the most tired and they've been, they started really picking on him. Um, the Warriors have when he's on defense. So, I mean, it, kind of, it looks like that, you know, the, the time Al is getting tired. I think it's safe to say, um, not getting a ton out of him. I mean, the bench last game, Pritchard came in, turned it over immediately, and then missed three solid looks over three. Didn't come in again. Uh, Derek White, you know, he'll, he continues to play really well on defense and look great against Steph and going around these screens and all that. But he, you know, he had sh- hot shooting in a couple games. That is gone. He was 0 for 4. He scored one point. Um, you know, and I still like, I like the drives and. I think he just has to let it fly. Like at this point, I think we're just going to have to live if he's, you know, going to shoot miss over 10 from open threes. Like we almost just have to go down that way. But for him to be so like hesitant and catching the ball with being almost unguarded at the three point line and not even looking at the rim. Like when he gets like that look where he doesn't want the ball and it's like a deer in the headlights, it's like, okay, he's adding nothing. Um, Grant Williams, you know, in that Buck series, we were talking about this guy, like, is he going to be an all-star in a couple of years? And now <laughs> it's like, I mean, he had that one great play where he blocked, uh, I, I forget if it, who, who he Steph. blocked. Was it Steph? Okay, yeah. yeah, he stayed with him, came around the screen, blocked Steph from behind, um, and then Rob had a great pass ahead to him, and Grant finished and won. Awesome play, and I thought Grant was more engaged, but it's like, it feels like he hasn't hit a three-all series. Um if he has not many. And I mean, that was a huge part of his game. So like we got four points from the bench, um, you know, before the extended garbage time happened. So that's obviously a huge problem. Um, and it's just, it's just tough. Like, I don't know. These guys have to step it up the team. It was very weird. So, I mean, we started, I think over 11 or over 12 on threes as a team, uh, did, which was killing us, obviously not all like bad looks. We just off, but you know, awful start for, you know, we've re- kind of relied on our three point shooting. Then finally Tatum hit one with, I think four and a half minutes left in the half. From there we hit, we made eight in a row going all the way midway through the third quarter. But then when ice cold again, we finished 11 of 34 for the game, including those eight in a row in the middle. Um, and one of those was, a, you know, a Luke Cornett three at the end. So we basically made two threes all game outside of like a, uh, 10 minute hot stretch, which is just, I mean, the threes have become like a reliable part of our offense, driving, kicking, getting open shots by, you know, our other guys. And it's of those threes, um, Marcus, Jason and Al shot, I want to say like 10 of 16. And the rest of the team was what one for 18 and the one make was Cornette. So I was like, I don't think we, we can't really win that way when all of our real players just like aren't making any. So you're saying play no. more, just playing Cornette more. <laughs> Cornette has earned some minutes. Is yes, absolutely, absolutely what I'm saying. No, but uh, I mean, it's like we can't. We, we're harp. There's all these different things to look at. It's like, okay, the turn. We can't turn the ball over this many times. Okay, we can't like, you know, do the not go after the good matchups. The Jays have to play better. The bench, you know, we need something from the bench, or we have to hit open threes and like down and down the line, but it's like, man, there's so many things that we can be doing better that we're just not doing. And it just sucks. And like, I mean, what do you, what do you think is the issue with, with the bench and the supplementary players? It's especially like the last game, the last so games, like, is it, what is like, you know, has Grant hit a wall? Do you think Al's just like has nothing left in the tank at this point? I don't know. What is it? Do you think it's a tough matchup for those guys? A little of everything? I think for Al, I think we could see a little bit, more aggressiveness from him when he has a good matchup in the post. I feel like more often than not, he'll get it in the post against like, you know, a smaller player or guard even. Yeah. They've gotten pretty, a, pretty comfortable putting, switching whoever onto out. Yeah. And they, he, he might take a couple dribbles and then passes out of it. If like, if he gets, you know, Steph or pool on him or something, don't take a couple dribbles and pass it out. Take him back him down to the hoop. If they double you, then, you know, he knows how to make the right pass. I tr- mm-hmm. trust him. And if they don't, then, you know, take a little, you know, a little turnaround, do something. I mean, just like yeah. if you get, if he has the matchup, he should go for it. He shouldn't be afraid to, you know, play a little post game against a smaller player. And I think that's, you know, that's not like his game, obviously. And I don't want him doing that 
you know, yeah. 20 times a game. But when we're going through these, you know, these slumps, and we can't hit a shot. I, w- I would like, I would maybe try and drop a couple of those, try and get Al switched on to us to a guard, see if you can get him in the post and then mm-hmm. see if you can get a, you know, an easy bucket. I mean, it's better than yeah, but the know, threes too. Other options. Like, in the losses, it's like, he's not even attempting threes too. So I think those, you know, the drive and kick back to Al is something they've lo- they've left for us sometimes. So that's another way. Like I'm happy to generate that as offense. I don't know if we can try that with Grant when he's in there too. But like let's try sure. to get these guys some clean looks or something from three. I mean, like you said, I don't want to just start turning into like oh Al has clay on him, so that we have to post him up because that just like hasn't been very successful. Right. So that's one thing. Um, you know, it's it's a lot to say. We need more aggressiveness out of. 35 year old, but, um, you know, I think 36. So I think it's, uh, I think that's one little thing we can do. And these are just, you know, cause obviously we've gone through all the major things. And yeah, this is just, we need Al, we need Al scoring double digits. Yeah. We need, we need he's just you know, do it. a little bit more from him anyways. And it's just, yeah. that's just one thing, you know, he's always done, you know, the things we knew need to do to win and, you know, play him a little bit more aggressively in offense is I think something we're going to need from him. Um, yeah. And then, like, another – well, I honestly – I think Pritch, Pritchard has had a too short of a leash, to be honest. And I know he hasn't been – I actually agree. He hasn't been great, obviously, but he's been good. And we were kind of worried, I think, that this wasn't a series that he was going to see a lot of minutes in. And it's kind he of – He has up, the second best plus minus on the team. Yeah. But the and <laughs> we're, uh, we're undefeated this series when he hits a three. So. Yeah. And last game, even though he was over three and his minutes didn't look great, they were, I mean, the team was even in his you know, zero plus minus last game. Yeah. So I think so, he's, he's held up well defensively on those guys, like on the pool matchup. He was fine with that. Um, I, I would agree with you. I think he could get a little longer leash in this series. We could play small more. Hope that he can get his shot going, hit, you know, get loose next game. Cause we really use his floor spacing, and I think that's why we've been effective is because even mm. when he's not making shots, like he gives the defense something more to think about than most of the other guys who are in there. Um, and, you know, he's had some moments where he lets us spread things out, and, you know, as, that just makes things easier for the Jays and easier for everyone else. So, yeah, I'm with you. I think we could use the shooting of Pritchard, especially whereas he's really hasn't been killing us on defense. No, if he's not – an absolute sieve on defense. We got you got to give him more minutes, I think. And you know his three point shooting obviously is huge, and he's like one of you know our only players other than maybe the Jays who can take deep threes. Yeah. I mean, everyone else is kind of like you know everyone else that can hit threes can hit threes, but it's like you know they have to be they have to be like good looks or whatever. You know, Pritch can get a shot like five feet behind a three and chuck it up and it'll fall. Right. And I mean, so and that kind of helps that, that can help when, like when they're clamped down. Tatum. on him. Yeah. And he, when he's catching those skip passes for unlike the wings from Tatum and Brown and catching and shooting, like he's probably as good as anyone on the team that you'd want taking that shot. And those are yeah. shots that like Tatum and Brown should be able to create. Yeah. And, um, you know, at times he can make his own, he can, he can, make his own shot at times. We've seen it. I mean, like, you know, he can get to the mid range yeah. and he can, you know, yeah. he can get to the basket on occasion. I mean, he's like your, you know, quintessential, like little spark plug. He is. And that's what he should be. And we should let him be that. And, you know, yeah. you know, I he would... goes, he goes over three to start the game or whatever it was with a turnover, but you know, maybe he comes in, you know, in the fourth quarter, rips off three threes in a row. And all of a sudden that's a completely different game. I mean, it's, that's, Mm-hmm. That's that's what, how it works with him. He's, you know, he's not gonna hit every shot. If he did, he'd be a superstar. It's he's he's a guy that comes in and gets hot, or he misses some shots. And I think you gotta you take the good with the bad with him. But you know, I think he he's an option to get us out of a a funk if we're really you know going through a long stretch. So I think so, and I, I think, think that I mean, yeah, just speaking in terms of going forward, but also, yeah, I think he could. I mean, we were putting him in there the first two games. He was going in with Tice. Mm-hmm. So that's going to make him look worse on yeah. both ends um, for one. So, like, you know, be a little smarter about putting him in there. I like when they put him in with, like, Tatum and Rob Williams. Usually that's a good lineup. So mm-hmm. uh, stuff like that, I mean, be smart about. But, yeah, let him – I'm I'm fine with giving him a longer leash. Um, absolutely. See what you can get. Like, again, with all the turnovers, uh, getting a guy who's a better ball handler and all those missed shots, someone who's a better three-point shooter – 
like is not the worst idea again, especially against the team where we generally have had the height advantage, but also like clearly want to play some small ball more. Um, so, you know, yeah, I, I'm yep. with you. I think it's, I think it's a good option. He it was excellent down in the fourth quarter in game one, which was probably, you know, our best or second best quarter of the series. Certainly. So, uh, yeah, I'm right with you on Peyton Pritchard. I mentioned, uh, Robert Williams. He was like, probably the biggest bright spot of last game and really you know it's talk about like a roller coaster ride with rob you don't know what you're gonna get from that guy on a night-to-night basis but overall in this series i think he's been really good especially the last few games he's been like our best player i mean it blew my mind that he played 30 minutes last game and we were plus 11 in his minutes Mm -hmm. so we basically i mean we lost by 10 and again, that was with a 7-0 run by like our deep bench, so essentially 17. So in the in the competitive like 15 minutes, well, I guess it was like 17 minutes that Rob sat, we were minus 28. <laughs> like that's so crazy. And I mean, Rob, we always joke about these like plus minus monster stats, but I think that speaks to a how well Rob is playing. Um, and I mean, it's not like showing up with huge stats, although he had I think eight points last game couple of big dunks that one that he on like the catch power dribble and go up and dunk with one hand like over someone that was like okay um you know he's just such a difference maker like in the paint again we talked about him as the x-factor for the celtics before the series and i feel like he's largely has been and like is making that difference and i think the fact that he's hold, held up that well and played 30 minutes is awesome. And I, it's crazy. Like we can't really ask him to play more than 30 minutes. Uh, seems like a crazy expectation, but he's just been so good for us. And I think that shows even more how much like the drop off has been to Horford. And I mean, that's, that's really, it's really those 15 minutes were with Horford at center. Cause we played Grant at center for what one minute. But other than that, if Rob was out Horford's in, so Basically, in 15, 16 minutes that Horford played, he got outscored by 27 points without Rob. Like, yeah. it's not just Al, but they are kind of abusing Al in the pick and roll. They've finally realized, like, he's just – it's just really hard for him, and it's not even, like, a diss to Al because I think he's still, like, holding up amazingly against these guys. And what we're asking him to do defensively, he has been super impressive. But he's, I guess, like really our weak link kind of in this matchup um, with the way they want to play, what they're doing and how we're trying to defend it. He is the weak link. And like you noticed the difference last game, Rob, when Curry would go into this like pick and roll, Rob was right up there. And like you can see it in the way Curry plays, whether it's his driving or coming off screens out behind the arc. When Rob is out there, like he was super active and racing out to the perimeter, but also not like falling for pump fakes. I mean, we're we're a different team, and then especially when he's a- active rebounding, obviously but on both ends, and then the finishing, the rim running around the rim, and even the playmaking to an extent. Like, you know, this is nothing new, but it just shows how good a fully healthy Rob Williams is and can be. And um, you know, we're going to need him out there. I said he can't really play more than thirty minutes, but we are going to need every minute he can give us next game. And I think, um, I think part of that to me is adjustments with the lineups. I mean, part of, I think playing Pritchard more is probably playing small more in general, playing Grant some more minutes, playing Al fewer minutes and hoping that with fewer minutes, you know, he'll be a little fresher and can give us better minutes when he is out there. But um, I think you got to play a little more for small um, and only one big and have it mostly be Rob. I think as much, you know, maybe kind of switch the way we've been subbing where it's been Rob coming out for white quickly to kind of mix things up and then bringing Al back. Whereas now the Warriors have adjusted to starting Porter and bringing Looney off. Maybe it more it makes more sense to actually do things the other way. Have Al be the guy who comes out quickly for white um, and then keep Rob in for most of the first, um, you know, mixing in Grant, Derek White, Pritchard playing small for much of the game and then bringing Al back just kind of maybe to close the, the second and fourth quarters. Um that to me, like if there's an adjustment to be made, I think that's that's really it. Play small more, um, play Pritchard more in general. I think White, he's he's playing so well, and we don't just don't have that many guys that I think, like I said, you play with him, and I think you just give him the the speech of like, hey man, we need you on both ends. Um, you know, if they're giving you open shots, you gotta just shoot shoot your way out of this, and <laughs> we kind of just have to hope that he gets hot if they're gonna keep giving him like wide open looks because again 
we're not making any of our shots and we're turning the ball over a hell of a lot. So at this point, if Derek White has a wide open three, we need him like just shooting that with confidence. And like I said, if he goes over 10, yeah, we're uh, probably not going to win, but I think he, he has to just shoot it. Um, Go down swinging. Yeah. I mean, Grant too. Like, let's see if we can get Grant in the rhythm, Peyton Pritchard, those three guys really off the bench. Like, we got to get something out of them. So, yeah, I mean, I think you lean into Rob at center as much as you can. Cut Al's minutes. Hope that they can, he can give you better minutes. And then lean on the bench a little bit more. I mean, you'd, you'd like to think the role players, the bench guys at home, uh, will play better. And we've seen them play well at times, at, uh, you know, varying times within the series. But at this point, I think that's like... If there's any adjustments to be made in terms of rotations and lineups, uh, that's kind of... That's kind of what I'm thinking. But again, it's like if there's a way to have Rob on the court for like 45 minutes. It feels like that's basically what I would do. Yeah. I mean, I got to – you say you can't really expect more than 30 out of Rob, but I think we might have to ask him to do that. I mean, I think we might – I think we got to give it a shot. I mean, we'll see what happens, you know, in the first half tomorrow. And I mean, if we have him on like his normal rotation – 30 minute rotation and we're not playing well he's <laughs> well it's just tough because you don't want to wear him down and like i said it's been so like it's minute to minute with him almost where you know you've seen games where it seems like he can't last 20 minutes and then you get a game like that where he does it for 30 so i mean hopefully that's all just him like starting to feel much better in general um but yeah i mean how how hard can you like really push this guy at this no point? and i mean i think so it's you know... diminishing returns eventually like you'd have to think I think, like you said, too, switching up the that rotation at the beginning might make more sense because, obviously, we play better when Rob's out there. So, you know, milk as much as you can out of him in the first quarter see if we can, you know, come out strong and maybe have a little lead and then, you know, build up the confidence. Because, I mean, if, if we can come out of, you know, a first quarter feeling good and playing well, then, yeah, you know, it kind of changes the whole dynamic. So maybe we just get the crowd into it, especially like maybe play you know. play for the first quarter, get what you can yeah. of him, and then you know, give him you know rest where you can throughout the you know the bulk of the game, and then hopefully have him for the end too. And I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, they have no idea how the game's going to develop after the first, but um, I think that's probably a good strategy. And I'm, I think, you know, we're going to do something, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see that. Yeah. kind of a rotational adjustment. So, I don't know. I mean, he may uh, – this is his time to shine. So It is. I mean, I don't think he may has, like, been bad or done anything no. wrong. But I think uh, – I think they've they've kind of figured out Al. So, I think limiting his minutes at this time is probably good. Because, I mean, I think the more he plays, like, you're seeing he's not giving you his best minutes. So, again, if he's maybe closer to 20 minutes, but they're 20 of great Al minutes, like, I'll – take that trade off and get more base, you know, Grant White Pritchard. Sure. So, Works for me. All right. Go on to the uh, Warriors on when they're on offense. You kind of mentioned how it's been the Steph show for the first four games. And I mean, really like mostly the Celtics have played, even in the loss of the Celtics have been awesome on defense. Um, and that's the part. I mean, I think for, NBA appreciators, this has been a really fun series because I think just the level of play, even though we're not getting like last second finishes, but I think the level of play in every game has been really high. Yeah, and sure. the defensive execution has been so good that that's like leading to making both teams' offenses look kind of clunky. But it's mostly just because the defense has been so good. I mean, the Celtics are taking away like every action the Warriors want to run. We're getting through their screens, we're taking away the dribble handoffs, like the switching. The helping everything's been amazing. We've t- they're known for you know their beautiful game that they molded after like those 2014 Spurs where it's all about the beautiful ball movement. Guys keep keep moving without the ball and get open. And the Celtics have like mostly taken that away. I mean the the stats in the first four games were like Curry was taking more shots off the dribble than off the catch, whereas usually it's like you know a massive or you know it, it was close to even. Whereas usually he's all about off the catch. He's taken, it was like the most pick and rolls he had run in, you know, I think all season in uh, game four. Like we've made them change their offense. So it was tough because you've got people calling for like, 
you've got to give more attention to Steph Curry. You've got to blitz Curry. You've got to, you know, you can't drop on these screens, which, you know, sometimes I think the Celtics were dropping a little too deep, but for the most part, like, that's the thing. For as much as Curry was going off, and I mean, especially in game four, like, the coverage was pretty sound. It was really good everywhere else, and even on Curry, like, it wasn't bad. Even when he's going off, it's kind of like he, he he's just making ridiculous shots. Um, you know, I thought, like, our guys were have really been done a great job with it for the most part. And then in game five, we get a Curry stinker, uh, I mean, by his standards, um, and obviously 0 of 9 from 3. First time he hasn't had a 3 in a playoff game ever. I think the first time in, like, four years in any game that he hasn't had a 3. Um, I mean, crazy, crazy, crazy. But, obviously... You know, and I think we were, I don't think we like drastically changed anything, but I think we were definitely a little more aggressive on Curry. Uh, It seemed like we were really like trying to deny him off the ball, doing a little bit more to make sure he didn't beat us. And then obviously, you know, they got the huge contributions from the role players. We talked about 26 for Wiggins. Clay got loose a few times, hit two massive threes in the third quarter to kind of slow our run and, and keep them in the game. It felt like at the time. Pool he had 21, I think. Uh, Pool had 14, um, including also two huge threes at the end of the third, including the another half-court bank shot, ridiculous buzzer beater. Um, so I was like, they're getting these contributions kind of up and down. Uh, Gary Payton, we should have mentioned Gary Payton, who's been, you know, talk about an X-Factor. Wiggins has been less of an X-Factor and more of like, their star (laughs) and you could argue that and that Peyton has been kind of the unsung hero a guy who came back from this injury they didn't even know if he could play uh has been spectacular when he's played and I mean especially last game he had their highest plus minus on the team he gave them 26 minutes off the bench obviously great defense you know you're gonna get that he had three steals plus he's you know always there and he also was awesome on offense he had six of eight shots and had I think 15 points hit a three or two um it was just cutting like getting open and I think all of this stuff it's the trickle down effect where you pay like that much more attention to Curry and shift the defense in his direction that much more. And it just opens up like the tiniest bit of room for these other guys. And you saw that in that game. So it's a pick your poison. And I mean, there's a reason Steph Curry is this good. And even, you know, whatever happens the rest of the series, like there should be no more debates about kind of Curry's legacy or his place in the pantheon of basketball. You watch him play and how much he kind of affects everything that's happening on the court, every play. It's like in his own way, a version of dominance and impact that it's like hard to compare to anything we've ever seen. So, I mean, even on a night where he goes 0 from 9 shooting, it was like the Celtics entire defense was built around him and he still opened up so much for everyone else on his team with not only his great passing, but just like his movement away from the ball at all times and, you know, cutting into space that he knows will draw attention from the Celtics and will open up space for his teammates. And they all took advantage of him. So I didn't think overall, like our defense on Curry was that much better. I thought, you know, he probably, I don't think his like quality of three point attempt was considerably better. I think, you know, if you play that same game a thousand times, he probably averages going like, three from nine or four from nine from three. So, I mean, part of it, he was just a little off, maybe like his legs, he was a little tired, the ankle injury wasn't as much adrenaline, whatever. But I guess the point is like, what do you think is the play here? I mean, first of all, like what's more frustrating losing where Curry is just nuclear and hit scoring 43 or when Curry's just like running around in pseudo decoy mode and all of their role players are beating us, which is worse and as a fan, just watching, and um, like, what do you think the Celtics should do defensively? Well, to go back to you know Curry's greatness too, it's like if you don't watch him every day, you know you, you still respect him. You see the highlights, and you're like, wow, this guy's awesome. But then when you watch him like five games in a row, you you really you know get to appreciate you know how great he is you know as an all around player and. Like you said, the way he affects even know. his defense. Yeah, and his defense has gotten solid. Good, yeah, solid to good. And you know he's he affects almost every part of the game. I mean, he can he can do you know a little bit of everything, and he he affects you know he affects the game from more than just you know hitting you know deep threes or you know right. crazy shots or whatever. But 
Um, to have that kind of 0 for 9 shooting threes and have the impact that he did. Whereas, again, like you said, you look at the box score, you're, oh, you know, Curry had a bad game. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, yeah, for his standards shooting-wise, it was an off night. But, you know, Wiggins, we said, was the best player. But, like, even in that game, Curry is by far the most impactful player. He's the engine for their team. He makes it all work. And, you know, without him, like, they're just – their offense is mud. Yeah. <laughs> it's um... amazing. To get to which one's more frustrating, uh, honestly, when Curry's like really cooking, it's like it's the most frustrating thing in the world to me. Um, like so helpless. You know, yeah, it's like we can't. We're helpless. We can't do anything to stop him. It's like if he's if he's you know on and he's you know having a, a Curry night, it's like infuriating. Um, so even though, you know, you could say it would make more sense, like last game would be more frustrating because, you know, he was off and they still beat us, but, you know, it was almost like we were kind of, you know, they were beating us in a way that we could have defended better. I mean, like we, we could have played, played them better as opposed to, you know, us playing, you know, perfectly and Curry still dominating us. So it's like... I don't know. It's it, they were both frustrating losses, for sure. But um, watching Curry go off and not being able to do anything about it is, for me, more frustrating. Um, but you know, I don't know. I mean, to like, and what do we do about it? I think it's, you know, I think we kind of have to get back to uh, obviously what we did last game, which seemed to be, you know, try and do everything we can to slow down Curry. Um, I don't think that's, that's not really our, hasn't really been our strength or like our game plan for most of the playoffs. I mean, we've, we've been playing our game and playing our defense and obviously we make, you know, adjustments game to game and, you know, within the game, if, you know, if necessary, but um, we really haven't been a team that just locks in on one guy and says, we got to slow this guy down and then that's our key to winning this game. It's just um, that hasn't been how we've been doing it. And I think we kind of, you know, win or lose, we got to get back to that, you know, our playing our defense. Um, and, you know, if that means Curry goes off, then he goes off. But, I mean, we got to we got to go down the way, you know, that got us here. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of getting back into more of our, you know, I don't know about our base defense, but getting back to our roots, I guess. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, now that we've realized that Curry can affect the game, you know, just as much being a decoy as he can actually scoring the ball, then it really doesn't even make sense to just focus on shutting him down because yeah, obviously it's not going to work. Yeah, I mean, as I, I kind of agree with you. I kind of think like as. It sounds probably weird, but I really – I'm not even sure we need to, like, really make any adjustments on defense. I think, mm. again, even in the losses, like, he may had a quote where he said, if we just, like, do what we should do on offense, we would have won every game. Yeah. It's true. Like, none of the games, even when Curry went nuclear, even when all of their role players stepped up, it's like, not like they're putting up crazy points. Um, defense has been fine. I mean, it really – I'm kind of fine with sticking with it. Um, you know, I thought with the defense the first four games was really good. We just had to – step up on like the screens a little higher on Curry with like Al and Rob. And I thought they did that last game and their role players made some big plays. I think we can maybe bank on that. They won't be as efficient on the road in game six. Um, so, I mean, I would, yeah, I'd play kind of a similar defense to the way we have. I don't think we overreacted. Like I think cause Curry played so poorly. Like I said, I think people are acting like we totally like changed our scheme. We didn't change that much. I think we were just like a little more aggressive. Um, but, you know, I think, yeah, generally what we've been doing all series, like stick with that, take away the 22 transition points we gave them. And, you know, their offense was bad. Ours was just terrible. <laughs> and we got yeah. no transition points. Like both half court offenses, I think I have been like below league average in this series. So the I think their defense is fine. Like, don't change that. We really just um, it's the offense. Like, again, Poole was able to have a strong game because we didn't attack him when he was on defense. So he was able to survive on the floor more, and he got going on offense, Like, which, you know, he's a pretty good 
offensive player. So it's not like shocking. So, I mean, so much of this is just comes from playing better offense, shooting a little better, not turning the ball over. And like, I'm really not that worried about our defense. I think it's no. good. No. It's a great. It's the, the, the key is, as you know, simple as it sounds, not turn the ball over as much play, you know, defense the way we play defense, just keep going at it. And then if our offense gets into a slump where we're, you know, stagnant for a while, we have to figure out a way to get an easy bucket. And, you know, that's, you know, getting back to like a matchup game or something, or, um, you know, maybe playing a little bit, trying to get a little bit of, you know, more ISO ball. And like we talked about earlier in the, in the, in the podcast, like maybe get a little bit more selfish with the Jays. I mean, we just, we, we can't get into these funks. And I mean, you know, we, we look at like, you know, last game um, and the game before it's like, you know, people are always thrown up on Twitter. Like, Oh, these were our last 20 possessions. And it's like mm-hmm. missed layup by this person, missed whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then it's, you know, missed free throw, missed free throw. It's like, you know, it's, it's just a, it's a trend when we're, when we're losing these games, we're going in these offensive slumps that are just, um, they're just avoidable and <laughs> very, you know, it's, it's just it, breaking out of a slump. Shouldn't be that hard. It's just, we have to do it. Um, and it's almost like, you know, we kind of, we just got to simplify things. Like, like we've been saying, just if we're not scoring, just simplify it. Let's just do something easy. Get, you know, find the bad matchup or the good matchup for us and try and take advantage of it. Or, you know, I don't know. I mean, there's there's a few ways to do it. It's just we're not, you know, we just have to, we have yeah we have to just simplify everything. Play our defense, not yeah. not turn the ball over, and you know, back to base. Try and get easy. Try and get yourself some easy shots when things aren't falling. And yeah, I think and that's you know that's it sounds simple, but it's because like that's you know we're a good team, and if we play well we're probably the best team in the league. And if we're place, if we play sloppy, then a team like Golden State is going to take advantage of it. Um, that's basically what it comes down to. So when you say, you know, like you said, it's play like we are capable of playing and we're going to win. Um, so we really yeah. don't have to change much. We just have to play better. Yeah. I mean, it <laughs> sounds it's very a, simple. It's, it's not an adjustment. It's playing better. Well, that's the biggest adjustment. Right. <laughs> um, should we should we talk about the officiating? No. Okay. I mean, unless you really want to, but I, I don't. don't like, I don't like talking officiating generally. I don't like talking officiating, but it's you can get you can get this off your chest. You obviously have something to say. It's not even so much. Well, I mean, the thing is, you almost have to talk about it because the way that it affected the Celtics. Yeah. It affected the game. Like, in that stretch where the, it was a one-point game going into the fourth, um, and then we had the the bad call where, I mean, what? I forget the order of events, I guess, but Clay had the push-off on Marcus, which is a tough play because, like, usually I feel like you get the call there. It looked like he pushed off him. But if you don't get the call, I mean, that's, like, as automatic a look as Clay is ever going to get, and that's obviously what happened. Then um, Smart got called for two guys flopping basically against him, including the one with Poole. Um, Smart got attacked mixed in there. And it seemed like that was just a huge part of the Celtics collapse. And they, it got back to the thing we talk about all the time, where they're letting the officials get to them, whether it's you know right or wrong. Whether they're right or wrong about the calls and the arguing, they clearly let it get to them. And they just have to keep their heads. They lose their discipline. It's, you know, and it's a lot of times it's smart. It's Jalen. It's Jason. Um, You know, our key guys, again, when things are unraveling, they're usually arguing with the refs. Then it doesn't help them get calls. We let it get to us. Sometimes we don't get back on D because of it. I mean, we had two technicals in this game. That's, you know, it's two two free points in games where points are at a premium. Um, It's just super frustrating to not be, I guess, more disciplined and more like, mentally tough about it. Miss one of those. He did. No, he did miss one. (laughs) He did. But in general, it's it's just still like, it's unacceptable in this situation. You can't let, you know, there's times where like, I understand taking attack as like to make a statement, but 
I mean, it's 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 tough in these games when it's it's more than taking the text. It's like the plays where then it's lingering back. We're not getting back on defense because we're arguing, which seems to be a staple of these kind of like bad sequences for the Celtics. Um, and you know, just making like dumb plays where we're letting. It seems like we try too hard then to get calls, assuming like, oh well, you called that on me on that end, then I'm gonna do. Th- that on this end and you have to call it and like they just don't and you know you can say that's bullshit and like sometimes it definitely is but you still have to just play just play through it get back on defense yeah. don't I'll let Eme argue with the refs well you know like it's it's brutal it's tough so to good. watch and like I don't it's it's frustrating that that's still an issue at times yeah and I agree with you to that extent where it's like I don't think Anybody generally wins or loses games from the officiating. I think it's you can win or lose a game by how you let the. That officiating, was a huge stretch in the game. Man. How you let the officiating affect you, and yeah. that's that goes like what you were saying. It's like you know you get some bad calls, and you know that's the officiating the you know the ref's fault, but the way you respond to it is what determines you know if you win or lose the game. So you're going to get bad calls sometimes more than others. And the, it's just like your response to getting bad calls. And we've, we haven't been good at responding to not getting the whistle. No, you know, now f- really forever. I mean, having said that Tony brothers, like should not be working NBA finals games, especially, <laughs> I mean, that was, that was awful. Like borderline unprofessional, the, what he was doing, I thought um, with some of those calls and you saw national media members like tweeting about it. So not just like, Oh, he's got it out for the Celtics. I mean, guys were saying they like it's just like whatever it was. He's you know it seems like he's taking it personally almost against some of these guys. I don't know why he's involved. I mean, it's it's a bigger problem than just him and just this one game and whatever. But like, it is so frustrating. And I mean, the Celtics got two technicals, but like, did they do anything close to what Draymond does? Like every play and. It's just like a, it seems like there's a double standard when you look at the way he argues with the ref, but then. Since he does it so much, he gets like extra leeway. Where then, like you know, smarter Eme turns around and chirps and seems to get like a pretty quick tech. So I mean, it's there's things again you can't let it like completely derail you. But as a fan, it's like what the hell, you know? I mean, the Draymond stuff is ridiculous, and it's just, it's like it's almost like weird that it has this effect on him because you feel like if I'm a ref. Like, wouldn't you be naturally inclined to be like, okay, this guy is a prick to me nonstop. Like, why would I want to reward him by giving him any benefit of the doubt or any calls in his favor? Just as like, again, human nature. Whereas if someone's generally reasonable and like has a rare outburst, you would want want to let that go and be thinking like, oh, he's usually not, doesn't argue. He's arguing like I probably missed one. Um, I mean, again, obviously like that's not all you should go by, but it's just so frustrating. And like, I don't, I don't get why they let it be a thing. Whereas like it just do it the same way. Like if you're going to let Draymond get away with that much, you have to let smart do just as much. Like, yeah. it's just and not I mean, enough. I guess credit to Draymond for, you know, definitely figuring no, out how to, play, how, it, how to play the refs perfectly. That. Cause I mean, it's like, oh, he's almost his- like, he's almost, you know, perfected it where he's like, he set the bar so high for him. It's like, you know, exactly. he, he can stand over a ref spit in their mouth for like 20 seconds screaming in their face yeah and not get called for anything like all those just stream on like yeah i think that's pretty what it is it's like oh that's just him that's his personality you know whatever so i mean that Um, part of it and he does it he he does it so often has been doing it for so long that it's like the refs are like you know numb to it so like Mm -hmm. he really has to go you know cross the line in order to get the tech which um isn't you know, fair, I guess, but it's the way it is. And I mean, he's right. It's not fair. And it's a bigger problem. Like it's a bigger NBA problem that I hope they will like somehow eventually address and clean up. But like it for now, it is what it is. There's nothing the Celtics can do about it, but I don't know how you clean that up though. I mean, like I just call it consistently. Like that's just the all always with the refs. It's the consistency. I just want consistency. What is a foul? What isn't a foul? Um, you know, I mean, I heard it, like a take, I forget whose podcast it was that I was listening to and they were comparing it to like, what if there were certain officiating crews in the NFL where it's like, you see a certain official and you're just like, Oh, you know, Brady's going to get called for intentional grounding like 15 times. Tonight. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's just crazy that the, you know, these are two teams. I feel like that's been pretty 
cleanly played basketball. Like there's no reason for the refs to get involved, but it's like, they just can't not be the story. And it's this, yeah. the very inconsistency you see it, Mark, Mark uh, Davis and Tony brothers. And you're like, Oh great. Like, you know, <laughs> we're going to get awful officiating and guys with the fan base thinks hate them. And that's just like a problem in general. I mean, it's also the fact that we even know and care who the officials are before a game starts is a, a problem. Like I mean, that also, just shouldn't be a thing. There could be like an aspect of it too, where you know these officials, like the players, you know, get nerves in finals games. I mean, obviously these 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 uh, refs are like, you know, they're they're human too. And I mean, okay, here's an idea that it seems to me very simple, and I'm. I mean, I'd be open to hearing a, a case against it, I guess. Maybe there is an obvious case that I'm missing. But, like, why don't you – and maybe they already do something like this. I really don't know. But why doesn't the NBA – like, they obviously do those last two-minute reports. So they obviously grade out, like, all the calls. Why, if they're not – why don't they do that all season and rate these guys mm. and then assign them games based on that? And then, furthermore, why, is this just a, like – is it just – a way more like physically demanding than I think to ref basketball games. But why can't you have the same crew ref officiate an entire series hmm. so that it's like, at least, you know, their expectations and what's going to be a call from like the, the, the game to game variance is what kills me where it's like, yeah. Oh, game two, the warriors were allowed to play <laughs> rugby the entire game. <laughs> And it's like game three, you see the other refs and you're like, Oh, now they're going to go back to calling it like regular basketball. And it's like, why can't we well, just have the same three refs or call every game and call it the same way? And then even if it's bad, you can just like, it's consistent. It's kind of like a baseball ump. You call, if you're given the call six inches off the plate as a strike, fine. Just do it every pitch. I mean, I think, you know, potentially the obvious reasons is for, as far as the grading, the, uh, the referees union is, would never allow them to get graded. I mean, why every not? it's just it would never happen um well it obviously is happening already to an extent though no like that's just i mean i think that's, that's kind of a that's a compromise that you see on their part they don't want the refs to be better like i get what you mean about protecting people within a union but that's it, that's i think that's kind of like a compromise where they're like all right well we won't give you you know grade you guys on the season publicly but you know this at least looks like we're giving more transparency and blah blah, blah. so and I, I do like the two minute report i think that's obviously you know, I think it's, it's just nice crazy to, to, to have. I mean, it's it's kind of like the, in the league are rough in the game, the biggest games. Yeah. Like it makes no sense. And then, as far as you know, as far as rotating crews, I mean, you know, then the NBA can't manipulate the, the the series if they can't pick the crew, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just seems like such an obvious. There's so many obvious things they could clean up that mm. would just help, like the NBA product and its image in general so much. Whereas like, even if you don't think it's a problem, like it's clearly perceived as a problem by enough people that just like, why wouldn't you want to change it for the good of your entire business? Well, usually when, when leagues or corporations aren't changing something, yeah, improve, improve the product. There's exactly. usually a reason why they're not doing it. I get it. I'm now, stupid. having said all that, what are the chances we see Scott Foster for game six? And is he sneaky our knight in shining armor for game six? I mean, yeah, if, if, <laughs> if Scott Foster's co- uh, reffing tomorrow. Like he's got to be, isn't he? I'm putting my mortgage on Celtics. But, uh, I mean, that's that's too, that's like, to it's your so point, it's like, why couldn't they just assign a referee crew to every game, like, before the series starts? It's like, if it gets to game six... Right. You it know. makes it seem like they're doing it like, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Cause that's why it like, makes it. Yeah. It makes it seem everything are so like bad and yeah. something they could so easily fix. That's yeah. Just... It's like if, if Scott Foster was already assigned to games to this game and he ends up, you know, then everyone's like, Oh, well he was already assigned to it. But it's like, you know, yeah. the morning of the game, it's like, Oh, Scott Foster is going to, there goes the NBA again. <laughs> it's yeah. It's the, the extender. It's just crazy. It's crazy. So, it's and it's like like you said. It's almost they must almost like it. Yeah, <laughs> control job. Like, oh, yeah, you guys, you guys aren't going to stop watching, so we're just going to keep doing it. All right. So we ranted for fifteen minutes about the refs after we both agree there's. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, it is. Uh, 
That's, well, that's, that's why I didn't want to talk about it because I know. I that's, know. That's how it. Uh, that's that how it always hard. ends up. <laughs> we waited an, an hour twenty to bring him up, though. I think that's all right. Right. Um, I hope it's better in Boston. Um, so all right. So I mean, moving on. I don't think there's a ton left to to really dive into on what we've already seen uh, from the basketball. So I guess it's like, what do you expect to happen here now in Game Six? Like, have the Celtics? Was that kind of did the Warriors kind of break us last game? We finally lost our vaunted like lost two in a row streak. Um, I don't know. Like as much as we've been down pretty bad at times, it something about that. I don't know. It it felt like the team was hitting like more of a wall almost. I don't know. Yeah. That wrong to say. I mean, I guess it was pretty, pretty bleak after game five against Milwaukee. Yeah. Also, um, um I don't know. What do you, what do you think is going to happen? No, I don't feel like they broke us in a sense where we can't win game six. I still think somehow we'll, I think, I think we'll pull it together for game six yeah. and, um, I do and win and take it back. And, but as, I, 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 I agree with you as far as like, where I feel like that loss or that last loss was like them, uh, Golden State, like asserting their dominance, being like, "All right, we're right. we're the better team. We're you know this is our series, blah blah blah." And you know, but they're gonna go back home and win it, as opposed right. to you know finishing our business. And I'm not, I'm not saying that they're they're gonna finish it off in seven, but that's kind of like mm-hmm. more of what it feels like, as, uh, you know, in regards to them, you know, right. Well, and is it like with the other thing is too, where you could you could look at it two ways, where like you said, finally someone beat us twice in a row. Mm -hmm. So do we look at it as like, oh, well, then there's no way they could beat us three times in a row, (laughs) or is it like, oh shit, we've like we're kind of clinging on to that, we can't lose two in a row. Now we have did like again, did that kind of break down our armor? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Who knows? I I think the you know for all of our inconsistencies and, you know, our youth showing at times, I think at least we're, uh, yeah. we're consistent as far as not being, having our will be broken, I guess. Um, I and, agree. you know, we're capable of bouncing back and we have sort of that, you know, we're, I feel like we're beyond our years as far as, um, you know, not getting, hanging our head and dwelling on mm-hmm. losses. And I think, um, I think we can still bounce back and I don't think, I don't think we've been broken yet. Yeah. I'm with you. I think, you know, through as much as it's, <laughs> it's crazy and even sometimes like frustrating to watch. I think this team is really as like even keel as they seem. I don't, I think they move on and I think I expect them to come out great. I expect the crowd to be fired up. I expect the Celtics to play with urgency um, and take it to them right from the start. I think the Celtics will play one of their best games start to finish. And I, uh, I'm strangely confident that they're going to bounce back and those guys are going to play like, you know, they have in the previous three potential elimination games. Um, you know, those last two games against Milwaukee were two of the Celtics best games once they were down three, two, so, you know, can't rely on that just happening again. Um, but you know, I still, I keep saying this team has earned the benefit of the doubt and they've earned like the optimism and the trust, um, You know, and again, that's not to say that they're going to win this series, but I have faith in them to come out and to not, you know, show any ill effects of the last two losses to come out like it's, you know, a, just a brand new game and exert their will, ride the crowd, and I'm looking for them to get a big win in game six. Yeah. Um, uh, I've had zero read on the Celtics for like <laughs> the last 10 games. Probably so more. I'm, I'm done. Yeah, I'm done predicting, but. Uh, I do feel like, you know, I feel like we should be able to pull this one out at home and then, you know, obviously anything can happen games, game uh, seven. Yeah. Let's see, I'm looking at tickets right now for tomorrow. I, I, might be, I, might, I might be scooping some up, actually, last minute. Prices and are that, going down. Well, yeah, I'm sure. I'm <laughs> great deal now. All right. Um, I mentioned the the raffle and there is a great, a great raffle oh, yeah. going on. If you're listening to this in time, Marcus Smart's young game changer foundation teamed up with uh, the MW F- fund for a great cause. Um, you can find it. Uh, I tweeted the link. It's, it's all over there and they're selling raffle tickets where you can win two tickets to game six, a stay in a hotel in Boston. Um, I think a nice dinner as well. I encourage everyone to join. Um, you can buy hundreds and hundreds of raffle tickets for, 
far cheaper than two tickets to this game would certainly cost you. And um, even if you don't win, it's it's going to a hell of a cause with, with two great charities. So I encourage everyone to participate if, if they hear this in time. Um, but yeah, anyway, so that's kind of game six. I think we're both we're both feeling good. I think for <laughs> for how down it's it'd be easy to be this down. But I mean, honestly, like like I said, they've earned it. They've earned our trust. Let's let's go. Let's go into battle again and take a fresh mindset. Um, kind of go from there. Let's. let's... Yeah, we've been we've been riding one with game. this riding one game. with this team for one game and one game. five games or whatever it's been. So let's ride Amen. with them for another couple more. Amen. Um, last question of the night, unless you have anything else after. No, I'm, I'm ready. All right. My last question is, how much do you fear Game 6, Clay? Um, uh, I mean, I actually wanted to bring up earlier that I feel like I feel like Clay has been playing better than he's getting credit for in the last couple of games anyways. Well, it's because it hasn't been so much the shooting. I mean, he's yeah. been shooting fine, but yeah, he hasn't had those like Oh shit! He just hit five threes in a quarter type of games. It's been yeah, he's been, he's been way better on defense than I thought he would be. He's held up really well in isolation against Brown. He's, he's hitting a lot of timely shots too. I feel like which very timely shots are yeah. sometimes more you know worse than you know no, him going he, off on a ripping off a run. But um, he has played well, um, really well on both ends. He's been a really reliable guy for them, mm, which I yeah. wasn't sure he'd be able to be. So yeah, credit to him, and it feels like he's gotten better as the series has gone on too. So. Uh, I mean, Game 6, the legend of Game 6, Clay, is very scary, and it, it does feel like he's been almost kind of like simmering he's last game. Up, it was definitely yeah. his best. He got a few looks, and like, oh, God, that's the one thing I fear, where the Celtics do come out with that momentum, and all of a sudden, it's, oh, my God, does Clay have 38 points? Like, <laughs> what's, what's happening, you know? So, no. uh, I'm going to say I don't <laughs> fear it, oh, Game wow. 6, Clay, at the moment. That's cool. um, you gotta you gotta respect Game Six, Clay. I mean, no, I mean I a little bit of fear, especially where we really haven't, him, but... haven't seen him go off. Um, you know, it's you know it's there deep down. But, I no, I, I mean I I wasn't <laughs> fearing it until he just brought it up. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know how it hasn't how the thought hasn't occurred. I'm starting to get some concern though, but yeah, you should. Uh, all right. Well, I'll uh, I'll try and sleep on that one and see if I can <laughs> build up a nice sweat tonight. No, I I trust our defense though. Keep doing what we're doing. It's all right. But scary cause. All right. Any uh any final thoughts uh that we want to get off our chest, or should we cap it there and say we'll we'll reconvene to recap Game Six and to preview Game Seven? I'm ready to go. I think uh. I think we've pretty much hit it on it all. So, hell yes. Well, thank you as always for joining us, Chuddy Heads. Give me a go sees. Go sees. Young boys screws loose, they don't strip the bolts on them. Should have never sent them to pick up the work for them. Spray the park and had my shit inside the car. Marcus Smart Boy was shooting with a 36 on him. Said if he wasn't in a rush, they was all gone. His tank cursive on the jets, he was gonna show on John. They were sleeping on the guards and it dawned on.